the coyote walking on two legs. I was told this story once. My dad isn't a bull sh tur or liar, so I know the story is true. So, this was the very early 80s, and my sister, who lived in Toronto came down to visit our parents for a weekend. She was staying at a friend's house, who loaned her a car, so she could come out. After her visit, she left a little after 9 p.m. She got maybe 7 to 8 miles away, when the car broke down. Thankfully, she broke down in front of a friend of the family's house. They let her in to call dad, and dad came to get her. The family said she could leave the car in their driveway for the night, and my sister decided to just stay at my parents for the night. It was now a little after 10 p.m. and pitch black, late November, while my sister and dad are driving back to the house, and they pass through a heavily wooded area. Out of nowhere they hear this incredibly fcking loud inhuman scream that was heard over the engine, them talking and the radio. Dad slammed on the brakes and they both started freaking out, when suddenly a six-foot-tall coyote walking on two legs with a black-white strip tail, appeared on the side of the road, and proceeded to walk in front of the car. As soon as it passed, that same scream played again only this time 10x louder. Dad slammed on the accelerator and they got the FCK out of there. It was never seen again. The creature had a human face. My roommate has told me this story a few times, and I want to see if anyone else has had similar experiences. As he tells it, he was driving home super late at night, maybe around 3 or 4 a.m. in a suburb of Phoenix, Arizona both times that this occurred. The first time, he was driving alone on a road that has an open field to the left of it, when out of nowhere a black figure on all fours bounds up out of the field and across the road in front of his car. As soon as the figure got to the other side of the road, it stops with inhuman quickness, turns around, and looks directly at my roommate. He described the figure as looking simian, completely black except for the face. The creature's face was a stark white human face. Not white as in Caucasian, but white as snow. This happened again a few weeks later, but this time the creature was sitting in a tree. As his car approached, it climbed down the tree, again with inhuman quickness, bounded across the road, stopped on a dime and turned around, and made eye contact with him. This time he had a friend in the car who also saw it, and began freaking out. It was the same exact thing as the first time, a simian, black body with a snow-white, expressionless human face. My roommate, ever the curious one turned the car around and began searching for the creature, but it was nowhere to be seen. The white masked creature. In Hunt for the Skinwalker, George Knapp and Colm Keller relay the stories of those who came into contact with skinwalkers near Native American tribal lands. One account from a New Mexico Highway Patrol officer states that while patrolling the highways of New Mexico, he saw a skinwalker on two separate occasions. In his first encounter, a creature wearing a white mask appeared next to his window, seemingly attaching itself to the car door. But then he realized it was simply running beside the vehicle, keeping pace at highway speeds. A few days later, and around the same area, he encountered the creature again. What makes this tale even more intriguing is that at least one other officer claimed to have seen the same ghoulish being while patrolling the area. An attack on a party van. Whenever my mom would take us on a road trip to her hometown on the Navajo Reservation I'd occasionally ask her to tell me a skinwalker story along the way. I remember every story she's told me was when we were driving through miles of nothing at night. Luckily, nothing ever happened to us during those drives. Anyways this is one of those stories and it came from my auntie. So my auntie and some of her friends used to party a lot back in the day. They'd hop in a beaten down van, drive out to the boondocks, and just drink and have fun. Of course this all took place on the Navajo Reservation after sunset on this particular night that's what they were doing. Everything was going good in Wetnet, when all of a sudden they hear what sounds like rocks being thrown at their van. Everyone gets quiet as they wonder what the hell is going on. The sounds of rocks being thrown stops, and then suddenly something jumps on top of the van roof. I should mention my family owned a white van that we would use for road trips because it had enough room for all my brothers and me, so imagine young me being told this story in a van. Terrifying, everyone starts panicking as the realization sets in and hurry to lock all the doors. My auntie jumps in the driver's seat and tries to start the engine. Of course, the beaten down van then refuses to start. 
Whatever is on the roof is still up there making banging noise at this point like it's jumping up and down. My auntie is freaking out when she then sees a hand with long nails reach over the roof and start scratching the windshield. At this point in the story my mom would take one hand off the steering wheel and scratch the windshield to simulate it. Then whatever was on the roof jumps off. Everyone is still freaking out yelling at my auntie to start the van and she keeps trying. That's when she sees the skinwalker walk up to the driver's side window and stare at her just a few inches away. Well, that's when my auntie jumped in the back and started praying for her life. Minutes pass and the skinwalker appears to leave. My auntie hops back in the driver's seat and gets the van to start and off they go. The mysterious legend encounters Mormon missionaries. While trading stories around a campfire, my friend recalled an encounter he had while serving an LDS mission. My friend's mission region had a reservation within its boundaries. However, it was relatively far from where he was serving. On one occasion, him and his mission companion were asked to travel further than usual to meet with some investigators. This took them near the reservation. On their way home, their car ran out of gas, and it wasn't until late at night that they were able to continue the journey home. My friend, who was driving while his companion slept in the passenger seat, chose a different route that took him through some backroads in an attempt to get home sooner. He told us he was driving above the speed limit when he noticed movement in the woods lining the road. Because coyotes were common in the area, he took little notice at first. Then he looked out the window and slammed on the brakes. The sudden stop jolted his companion awake, who immediately wanted to know what was wrong. My friend was shaken and said he would tell him once they got home. He asked him to say a prayer. The Emerald Lushi has found me. My grandmother on my mother's side has always been very superstitious, for lack of better word, she's not religious, but she does believe in a lot of paranormal stuff. Her mother was full-blooded Navajo and her father was Irish. Either way, she'd never been anywhere east of Montana and she grew up in Nevada. One year, when I was in Gratishul, we went to visit her, most of the visit was pretty uneventful, typical boring old people stuff, except she always kept her curtains drawn shut and would always peek out the window and when someone asked what she was doing. She would simply reply Yenald Lushi is watching me. This went on for nearly the entire visit until a few days before we were due to leave, my grandma and my, then, baby brother, he's 19 now lol, were in the front yard that evening, planting flowers when all of a sudden, my grandmother starts shouting insert little brother's name here get away from that creature. It's not safe. Of course, being in Nevada, we all assumed that my brother had found a scorpion or a rattlesnake, so we all run outside to see my grandmother clutching my little brother and shaking in terror against the side of the house, standing out in the yard, was a large black Great Dane-sized dog. It was staring at my grandmother with an intensity I'd never seen before. It looked up at us, gave a little huff and bounded off, I don't remember if it moved unusually fast or not, but do remember it had really deep yellow eyes. When my mother asked my grandmother what had happened, she kept repeating the Yenald Lushi has found me. She moved a couple weeks after that. By the time they made it home, his companion was dying to know what had happened. My friend told him. I looked down at the road next to the car and saw six men running on all fours, keeping up with the car. I was driving 40 miles an hour. Convinced I saw a skinwalker. As many of you might already know, many Navajo people, including my own family, are very reluctant to speak about skinwalkers because it is believed to attract their attention. Well, I however, grew up away from the Navajo Nation and was very naive about the subject. When it came to skinwalkers, I was an absolute skeptic. My mom used to tell a story of how back in the 80s, when she lived with her siblings and my grandparents, still in Shiprock, at the southern outskirts, about how she and my aunt saw a skinwalker just outside their driveway under a streetlight. She described it as a black dog with dirty fur, a twisted noodle-like front leg, and these unnatural eyes with a soft burnt orange glow. Me being my own closed-minded self doubted every word, but I never said my doubts aloud. But, these doubts totally changed last year when I went to my grandparents' house last October. Me and my family had just finished scorting the carnival at the Navajo Nation Fair and called at night. The house was close enough where we could walk home in just 10 minutes, so we did. 
When we got there it was about 9 at night, where we stayed up until about 2 catching up about family affairs and the local news. It was during that time, that I just decidedly opened my mouth and blurred out the question, Hey are skinwalkers real, guys? I asked. You shouldn't be speaking about that. My grandma said with almost a disturbed yell in her voice. So she and my grandfather both decide to go to bed. After being scolded by my mom, one of my aunts chimes in with a very cautious tone and says, they're real alright, had a few start screaming outside of my trailer in Farmington just a few night ago. Your cousin had nightmares the whole night and woke up crying that morning. Not wanting to push the discomfort any further, we all decided to go to bed. Now the trailer home is pretty old, and it was a really nice night, so we slept with the windows open with screens to prevent bugs coming in. Everyone had drifted off to sleep except me, because my mind was still going a million miles a minute about skinwalkers and wondered, if I ever encounter one, while well here on the reservation, as a kid I was told it's taboo to think about skinwalkers, because it can still call their attention. That's when the SHT totally hit the fan. Just as I was settling and finally getting relaxed for sleep, I started to hear something moving outside. I get up from the couch and start wandering over to the kitchen window. In the trailer, all of the rooms have the lights out, so the only visible light that can be seen is from the porch light out front. I was thankful for this because I told myself if it really was a skinwalker outside, then hopefully it wouldn't notice me seeing it. So I muster up the courage and take a quick scan of outside. From the porch light all I can see is the dusty ground and the vehicles that my family drove along with some old metal trash cans that stood beside the road. Looking for about a good 5 seconds, I wasn't able to see anything, so I was getting ready to turn around and walk back to bed thinking it was just a stray cat or something. Only have taken 2 steps, I hear what sound like a distorted scream coming from outside, definitely close by. Here rising, I look outside again, and there I see it. A coyote-like figure was staring at my direction from behind the cars, just outside of the reach of the porch light. Only it looked, awfully wrong, and gave off an evil vibe just from seeing it. It was grey with very disheveled hair, and a horrific orange-red soft glow came from its eyes. I noped the hell out, and ran back to the bedroom. It was at this moment I had begun to also notice an awful stench in the air, that smelled like rotting meat. I started trying to wake up my mom who was like, um, it's almost 3 a.m., what do you want? I immediately began in a shaken voice, there's something scary outside. Then she said, now annoyed because I woke her up, ugh it's probably just a stray animal or something, it's the res, animals wander all the time at night. She obviously wasn't getting the drift of what I was saying so I screamed, there's some Blair Witch Project SHT going on outside, ma. That got her attention. What? What the hell are you talking about, she said. Then we heard it, the thing outside started making more of its dreadful like screams and started, what sounded like thrashing outside on the ground. Hear that? That's what I'm talking about. So both her and I got back up looked outside the window, and the coyote thing was making its way to the door. It walked with an odd limp and dragged its back right leg as if it is handicapped. We could hear it start to scratch against the door and make this odd muffled moaning sound. My mom went and got my dad, and they both started shouted in Navajo all sorts of words telling the thing to go away, and saying it's not welcome here. Well all this commotion was enough to get the rest of the trailer up as they came out into the hallway. The only thing my mom did, was turn to them, and said skinwalker, while proceeding to point to the door, noise is still happening. Apparently they already knew exactly what to do as my grandfather got out a handgun from a drawer and a bag of ashes. He coated a few bullets, and loaded them into the gun, and went straight to the door. Yelling out more Navajo, that was too fast for me to comprehend he swung open the door and fired twice. Nothing. The thing managed to escape before my grandpa could put a bullet in it. That's the fastest one I've ever seen, said my grandpa. Next thing you know my aunts, and my parents are freaking out about what just happened saying stuff like, what if it comes back tomorrow, and it saw us, does that mean we're targets now? Afterwards my grandparents calmed everyone down, myself included, saying we'll be fine, and we all went to bed, around 3ish. Morning comes and my grandparents call one of their neighbors and explain to them what happened. 
Apparently one of them was a medicine man who used to partake in Yebai Che's, Navajo ceremonies used for healing and curing sickness, and came over to bless each family member and the grounds outside. Don't get off the bus. Anybody that has been on the Navajo reservation has either probably heard of some creepy things or have experienced pretty creepy things. Namely skinwalkers. I have only seen one. Here is my story. I come from a small town in northern Arizona that sandwiched between the Paiute Reservation to the north and the U.S.'s largest Navajo reservation to the south. My high school being so small, a 1A high school that has, on average, 80 students enrolled every year. Always had to travel south about 5 to 10 hours one way to play another high school in any sport. This means that we traveled a lot on the Navajo Res. And we also usually stayed at hotels, when we would head out to play and come home in the morning, but this trip was a little bit different. I remember the basketball coach saying that the school didn't have enough money to put up the teams in a hotel that trip, so we were going to be on the road for a total of about 12 hours. I was the only male senior to play basketball that season. We had just got done playing our game and headed home on our bus Big Blue. We were headed out, and it wasn't long, about two hours of driving, before we had entered the res. By this time, everyone was asleep with it being about two in the morning. When we had crossed the res's border I noticed the bus driver had sped up and was now going about 85 miles per hour. I thought this was a little weird because he never exceeded the speed limit, at least not in my high school career. For some reason, I couldn't fall asleep like the rest of my teammates, and I just sat at the back of the bus, staring out across the desolate desert landscape that was lit up by the full moon. As I looked out, I could see a figure running towards the bus at an angle of pursuit, and keeping up with the bus at 85 miles per hour. As the figure got closer I saw that it was a humanoid form. As a matter of fact it looked exactly like a human, only that the face was painted half black and half white with glowing eyes. Glowing eyes like a rabbit's eyes reflecting light from a spotlight. I immediately thought, holy crap, it's a skinwalker. The skinwalker ran up to the edge of the road and just kept up pace with the bus hurtling sagebrush and rocks while staring at me. After I made eye contact with the thing, I could not look away. It was as if something was holding my head and eyes in place. The skinwalker just smiled at me this inhuman smile that went ear to ear, showing crooked, yellow, pointed teeth. I felt like I was going to throw up, and I was panicking through the whole ordeal. The skinwalker started to crumple down onto all fours, still keeping up with the bus. I could see his bones crack and reform, hair started appearing all over the skinwalker's body, and in about three seconds, was now a coyote, and it ran off back into the desert out of view. As soon as it was gone, I ran to the onboard bathroom and puked a mixture of food and blood. I didn't want to tell anyone for fear they would think I was crazy. I confided in my Navajo friend. She told me that I needed to see the chief, who also happened to be a friend of mine, and get a blessing. I saw him the next school day in the parking lot. He just came up to me and mumbled something in Navajo while waving a feathered scepter-like thing, turned around, got in his truck and drove away. To this day, I haven't seen another skinwalker. It might be due to the fact I moved away from that town in Rez, and, if I do have to go south, I go around, way around. Maybe trying to hit it wasn't the best idea. My father owns a small delivery service that operates out of Farmington, New Mexico. We mostly deliver small packages out to the middle of nowhere that are too much of a hassle for the larger delivery companies to bother with. My dad is the only employee, and we have a few pickup trucks and a trailer. One day we get a delivery out to Window Rock, Arizona, on the Navajo Reservation about two hours from Farmington. My dad gets the call for the job while he is chilling with his Navajo friend, Travis and his girlfriend. Travis mentions how he's got family in Window Rock that he hasn't seen in ages and suggests they go with him. I was about six or seven at the time and it was the summertime, so dad decides we'll go down together. He can do his delivery really quick, then while Travis sees his family we can go check out the Window Rock, big rock face with a large hole in it that goes to the other side, pretty cool. We had to convoy in separate trucks since my dad's was loaded down with freight. We decided to bring along some talkie-talkies, so we could communicate with one another. 
We spend our time in Window Rock, everything is generally uneventful, and we start heading home along the old highway with my dad and I in front, and Travis and his girlfriend in their truck behind us. I honestly don't remember most of the Window Rock trip, but this next part I can never forget. We're somewhere on the highway between Window Rock and Gallup, New Mexico. It had just rained earlier in the day, and the road was kind of slick, so we were taking it pretty slow. On the left of the highway there is nothing but sandstone cliffs, and on the right there is a huge field separated from the road by a small barbed wire fence. We crest the top of this hill, and down at the bottom of the hill we see what appears to be a very large dog, sitting back on its haunches in the middle of the road, facing the cliffs. My dad calls over the radio, hey Trav, do you see that big ass dog? Travis starts yelling back over the radio, that is not a dog. Speed up right now and hit it. He sounds almost hysterical. He just keeps screaming hit it. JJ you have to hit it. Please. Please. Hit that fking thing right now. So my dad starts to speed up, and as we get a bit closer I can begin to see it a little more clearly. It's covered in this brown, wiry, matted hair that appears to have dried blood all over it. It's still facing the cliffs, but the moment our headlights hit it, it turns and looks at us, and it has a face. I don't know how else to describe it other than a mix between a bear's and a human's face. It looks twisted and distorted and almost in pain. As we get closer to this thing we start to realize it's actually F King Huge. Though it was still sitting on its as haunches, it is about shoulder height with the hood of the truck. We get literally inches from hitting it, when it lets out the scream, that sounds like someone screaming as their lungs were filling with water, and it leaps backwards, towards the field, landing just on our side of the barbed wire fence. Then with another leap it was gone from sight. Travis is comes over the radio again, holy sht. Keep driving. We have to get out of here. We have to go faster, he kept repeating that last part. We have to get out of here, and we have to go faster. Pretty soon we are speeding like crazy and just as we start to come near the outskirts of Gallup, we get pulled over. Travis pulls his truck over with us. Naturally this makes the cop, a Navajo man himself, very on edge, and he immediately asks why Travis felt the need to pull over as well. Travis says we just saw a skinwalker a few miles back, and it's been following us. The officer immediately turns white, stammers something about a verbal warning gets in his car and takes off. We do the same. We didn't see anything else that night but when we got home Travis refused to let us leave without taking some kind of Navajo totem thing that was supposed to keep it away. Say their name and it will kill them. We live in a rural community on the Navajo reservation. My aunt and her two brothers were home alone while my grandparents had left for the evening to attend a chapter house meeting. They were in the house and like many people from the reservation they didn't have electricity. It had been dark outside for about an hour, and my aunt and my uncles were getting ready for bed. Outside they heard noises, as if someone moving things around outside. My oldest uncle went to look out the front window, and saw a figure out by the truck. This was immensely out of the ordinary becuous the closest neighbor was miles away. Whatever it was opened the truck door and began to dig through the personal items that my family had left in the vehicle. My aunt and uncles were frightened by the sight and knew that they should take action. They took out the rifle and all steadied themels to hold it up. They flung open the door and aimed the gun at the dark figure. The figure turned and started to walk towards them, totally unfazed by the weapon. My uncle pulled the trigger, but nothing happened. The figure drew closer, and my aunt began to smell something like a rotting corpse. It was so strong it made her gag. My uncle continued to pull the trigger with no luck, and the figure came closer and closer. Off of the distance, headlights were coming up the road. My grandparents were returning. The figure looked toward the lights and started to move away, and tucked itself behind a tree near the house. My oldest uncle ran toward the truck with the gun. My grandfather got out of the car, and my uncle pointed to the tree. The thing was poking out its head, to observe what they were doing. My grandfather ran into the house and over to the stove, and grabbed a handful of ashes and rubbed over the gun, and placed a ash-covered bullet into the chamber. He walked out onto the porch and fired toward the tree. Whatever that thing was didn't expect the gun to go off. The gunshot echoed and the dark figure began running. 
My grandma chased my aunt inside, and my uncles and my grandfather went after it. There weren't many roads or paths, so as my grandfather and uncles chased after the figure, the truck was bouncing, and the headlights were not fixed on one particular spot. My uncle swears that, whenever the headlights would hit the figure he saw a woman, not only that, whoever it was running on all fours like a bear. My grandfather eventually stopped the truck, and as they neared the ditch, that drops about 20 feet. He got out, and began to yell in Navajo. My uncle says, that he was yelling about a local woman. He yelled that he wasn't scared, and that he knew it was her, and to leave his family alone. A few days passed and there was news that the woman that my grandfather was yelling about had passed. I've always been told that if you know who the skinwalker is, say their name and it will kill them. It nearly got him and his brother. This is my father's story written from his perspective. When I was about 11 or 12, we lived in a small house made of mud and stone. A lot like our house now. It was two of my brothers and I in the house. Everyone else had gone to the Jamas feast, and left us to tend the sheep. We were getting ready for bed, when we heard the dogs going crazy outside. Thinking it was nothing more than coyotes howling in the distance, we told them to be quiet. We began to drift off into sleep, and the dogs would not shut up. Somehow, I was able to go to sleep for a few hours. Then I woke up very late in the night. It was very quiet and still in the house, save for my brothers snoring and breathing. I realized I needed to use the outhouse and woke up my brother to take me there. He teased me about being scared, which I certainly was. We went out with our flashlight to the outhouse. The dogs began with their craze barking out in the sagebrush, going from one place to the next. My brother went first and I waited outside for him. While waiting, I tried to follow the dogs with my flashlight. Suddenly there was a very loud whine from one of the dogs. Then everything went quiet again. It was really too quiet for that time of year. Not even the sheep were making noise. Suddenly I heard a few of the dogs going completely mad by the truck. When I looked over, there was this man. He was unbelievably tall, leaning one arm on the cab roof of the truck. He was looking at the dogs for a little, and then suddenly kicking one of them. They all scattered in different directions. The thing looked up at me, and I saw its face. It had a pure white face, like a full moon, two burning red eyes, and a slight smile that was pure black. I could not move, or make a sound. It began to walk toward me with long strides, until it finally towered over me. All I began to see, was a dark red. Like the color of the blood, when you cut the throat of a sheep. I kept getting deeper and deeper into its eyes. I could faintly hear my brother coming out of the outhouse. With this, the thing looked up at him. Reality came rushing back to me. I noticed that my brother was too distracted with his buckle to realize what was going on. I also noticed this thing's long hands hovering just inches from my head. Its skin was black ash, and he smelled like a bloated dead animal in summer. I was still unable to move or speak, the skinwalker began to move toward my brother. Finally noticing this figure, my brother became paralyzed as I was. Closer and closer it drew, reaching an arm out toward my brother's head. Something finally snapped in me, I became unbearably angry. I broke from the trance and lunged at the skinwalker, raising my arms like a wild animal and barring my teeth at it. A growl came out that I never knew I could make. I became more and angrier at the thing that was trying to hurt us. It kept that smile at first, but the angrier I got the more the smile faded. Finally, with everything I had, I began to make this primal roar at it. It fell backwards and ran away into the night. Looking back at me, its eyes were dim and dull, its smile now long since gone. The next morning the family returned home from the feast. After relaying the story to my parents, they quickly hired a medicine man. Stay away from ruins of the Inquisition. This all happened about five years ago. One night, a few of my friends, decided after a night of hanging out, that we'd go on an adventure at about 3 a.m. We took a ride about 50 miles to this old Spanish ruin, in New Mexico, that was once the seat of the Inquisition. I can't for the life of me remember what the place is called. So we jumped the front gate to the place and start exploring. One of my friends, brought a flute with him, and he started playing it, and about 30 seconds into his, mediocre, playing, 
something started screaming really, really loud on the tops of the long destroyed walls of the place. It was going from wall to wall really quick, screaming the most blood-curdling scream you've ever imagined. We noped the FCK out of there, one of my friends pissed his pants, and drove for a few hours to Bandlier National Monument, where we planned to camp out at for the rest of the weekend. We got to Bandlier at probably like 6 or 7 a.m. and set up our camp. After a few hours just talking about what the hell happened at the ruins, I went to talk to Piss behind a probably only like 300 feet from our camp. This is where everything starts getting a little fuzzy. I remember seeing two dust devils coming my way and when I turned around again, two of my friends were there and they were motioning me to follow them. I couldn't help but to follow them, like I was being pulled behind them in shackles. I followed them for what seemed like 10 or 15 minutes and then I snapped out of it. These weren't my friends they had bright red hair, with my friends faces and cat eyes. Both of these friends were brunette. I stopped walking and they looked at me with probably the most terrifying gaze I've ever seen. Monsters in movies are nothing compared to this. I turned around and ran as fast as I could back the way I came from. After like 5 minutes of a full sprint, I got back to that rock that I pissed at and found our camp. Everyone was there, still sitting around talking and didn't even notice that I was gone. I told them what happened with the lookalike skinwalkers, and we packed up everything and left probably within like 10 minutes, and got the hell back to Albuquerque. Tap tap at the window. I was a kid when this happened my uncle and I were finishing up chopping gathering firewood for my grandmother because it was getting dark. Driving back on a dirt road at about 30 miles per hour, give or take 5 miles per hour, I had this awful sense of being watched. Before I could turn to look out my window, passenger side, my uncle quickly shouted, don't. I completely froze. My heart felt like it was beating out of my chest, then completely stopped when I heard a tap tap on my window. My uncle sped up and was loudly praying in my native language. I didn't know what was going on and thought it was over till our truck suddenly dipped from the bed. My uncle then started saying, look at me and don't turn away over and over. Then I heard it again, tap tap but from the window behind me. It was getting harder for me to breathe, and I wanted to cry. A minute or two passed and the truck dipped again. My uncle looked around and sighed. It was quiet besides the truck and the road. He looked at me and said, we will ask your father to do a prayer in the morning. So the evil will forget our faces. Navajo to English equivalent. I remember curling up on the seat and just staring at the radio watching the time, listening to my uncle sing an old prayer till we got to my grandmother's house. I called my uncle because I had a nightmare about that night. We talked about it for a bit. He said, I didn't see faces, just eyes, like brake lights you see on the road. It watched you, Navajo to English equivalent, before hanging up I tried joking with him about it. Why didn't you just step on the brake when it was in the back? No laughter. Just a pause. Because it wasn't alone. Inald Lushi is watching me. My grandmother on my mother's side has always been very superstitious, for lack of better word. She's not religious, but she does believe in a lot of paranormal stuff. Her mother was full-blooded Navajo and her father was Irish. Either way, she'd never been anywhere east of Montana and she grew up in Nevada. One year, when I was in grade school, we went to visit her, most of the visit was pretty uneventful, typical boring old people stuff, except she always kept her curtains drawn shut, and would always peek out the window, and when someone asked what she was doing, she would simply reply Yenald Lushi is watching me. This went on for nearly the entire visit until a few days, before we were due to leave, my grandma and my, then, baby brother, he's 19 now lol, were in the front yard that evening, planting flowers when all of a sudden, my grandmother starts shouting insert little brother's name here get away from that creature. It's not safe. Of course, being in Nevada, we all assumed that my brother had found a scorpion or a rattlesnake, so we all run outside to see my grandmother clutching my little brother and shaking in terror against the side of the house, standing out in the yard, was a large black, Great Dane-sized dog that was staring at my grandmother with an intensity I'd never seen before. It looked up at us, gave a little huff and bounded off, I don't remember if it moved unusually fast or not, but do remember it had really deep yellow eyes. When my mother asked my grandmother what had happened, she kept repeating the Yenald Lushi has found me. 
She moved a couple weeks after that. On the res alone at night, my uncle and cousin saw a large deer on the side of the road. When they got closer it hopped over the fence like a bipedal man. One time driving back from Gallup, my dad saw an old Navajo woman walking on the side of the road, and when he slowed to offer her a ride she took off into the plains, quickly with inhuman speed. Once when I was a kid, my family was at my aunt's house, which is in a rural secluded area, when we were toyed with by a few entities. They would make animal noises and when we looked at the direction from which the noises were coming, they would turn a flashlight on and off. The noises would come from all directions, in increasingly shorter succession. Usually when I'm there, on the reservation visiting, alone late at night, I will feel the presence of evil and dread, panic and paranoia will wash over me, and as sudden as it comes it will leave. It moved like a toy rocking horse. My uncle is Mexican and Native American. This happened in the Mojave Desert in Southern California. He was driving around with his girlfriend late at night, and they saw something that looked like a huge black dog on the side of the road. He slowed down and the dog began crossing the road. Instead of walking like a normal dog would, this thing moved like a toy rocking horse. He said it stopped in the middle of the road and stared right at them, and its eyes had a red glow. My uncle is the most baddest person I know, and it scared the crap out of him.